Today's comments were selected from John Ibbotson's popular column as others go backward, Canada moves forward. With hundreds of comments, many by John Ibbotson himself, this piece clearly struck a nerve with Globe readers. Some writers believe immigrants are failing to integrate into Canadian society. I see no evidence of that. They are integrating every bit as well as the Germans and Irish, in the 19th century, Poles and Ukrainians and others from Eastern Europe, in the early part of the 20th, Italians and Chinese and Koreans and Sikhs and Lebanese and so many others, last half of the 20th, and Filipinos and Indians today. There is zero evidence that today's immigrants are integrating differently from yesterday's. Zero. Let me repeat that. Zero. Facts, please. Progressives should stop calling their opponents Harper Conservatives. I wrote a 436-page, OK, with index, biography of Stephen Harper that both conservatives and progressives generally considered fair. There is little in this column that he would disagree with, though he would never have legalized cannabis. Balance, please. John Ibbotson In response to John Ibbotson, the numbers are fundamentally different than they have been in the past. We used to take about 70,000 immigrants of all classes, now it is 350,000 annually. In previous years, we did not need any immigrants because net natural increase was sufficient, now we must as a matter of survival. As a result we cannot afford to be as choosy. We will see if anything changes. Red Maple also in response to John Ibbotson, completely agree, John. First generation new Canadians have some difficulty in integrating just as we all have difficulty expanding our social circle or changing careers after reaching a certain age. The second and subsequent generations become an integral part of the fabric. And while I had little patience with Mr. Harper, you are right in saying that there is nothing to be gained by ascribing qualities or positions to him that are not based in fact. Given that he is no longer in public life, it is time we stopped giving undue consideration to his influence on current events anyhow. Whistling in the dark other comments from John Ibbotson's column. Canada is overall a really great place to live. As a dual Canada U.S. citizen who spent nearly 40 years stateside, I can honestly say that I prefer Canada over the U.S. in nearly every way that really matters. That said, I think we need to be very careful when self congratulating. Canada hasn't experienced the same intense immigration challenges that the EU has nor the horrific terror attacks that have shaken the UK, EU, and US to their core. With all of the unacknowledged and unresolved prejudice, of all kinds, that simmers just beneath the surface of our so-called polite society, I think we'd be just a fractious if we were faced with the same stressors other countries have had to endure. We already have a fair amount of political polarization a rise in populism, and increasing levels of hate crimes, according to a report released just this week, not to mention high levels of drug use slash abuse, mental health problems, homelessness, lack of affordable housing, etc. We have reasons to be proud, of course, but not to the point of looking down on other countries or deluding ourselves into thinking that we're different somehow, because we're not, we've just been very fortunate. Sleepy Bear in response to Sleepy Bear, heaven forfend that politicians pass motions as as obvious that it's okay to be white and that decry racism of any kind. Those who cannot abide such expression exhibit a particularly odious strain of intolerance. That strain is anathema to diversity of thought and belief, the cornerstone of a liberal democracy. John Ibbotson repugnantly celebrates that that strain of intolerance is strongest in Canada. The sad state of debate in this country, the narrowing of thought, the insistence on shutting down those who don't share the same beliefs is nothing to celebrate. It's a sad end to our glorious liberal democracy. Dolly Parker with respect to the legalization of marijuana, I would think we need to wait a year to see how everything works out, the immigration file is sure to be a hot topic in the election year, so again it's too soon to be sure that this will not be a sore point going forward. There are 400,000 jobs that can't be filled in Canada, which implies that immigration is not solving the skill shortage. I am not a big fan at looking at other countries and running a comparison. It's irrelevant to our lifestyle if another country is doing better in one aspect and poorer in another. Similarly, 
I don't think citizens in other countries devote a single minute of their day musing about Canada, and wishing they could emulate us. Politicians here, certainly like to think they do. All this chest thumping of late is a little over the top and does seem a little contrived. We are what we are and don't need to brag about it, but rather just get on with improving what we can for Canadians, and not for the attention of other countries. Jeff Spooner from the comments is a new feature designed to highlight interesting and thoughtful contributions from our readers. Some comments have been edited for clarity. Everyone can read the comments but only subscribers will be able to contribute. Thank you to everyone furthering debate across our site.